Hello, my name is Mr. Pendergrass, and I am the elementary instrumental music teacher at Fairmount Park School in Seattle. Now, I'm coming to you from a backdrop of my music classroom. I'm not really there. I'm actually at my house, but I thought I would use this backdrop today to teach us about the trombone. In this trombone lesson, we're going to talk about articulation. Articulation is the way we move our tongue and our breath well, you know, we're going to talk about it in the lesson. And it's a little tricky because we're going to be doing things that happen inside our mouth that we can't really see, but we feel. We're also going to look at two songs that will really help us get articulation so we can play crisp, clean notes. So I'm going to give you just a few moments to grab your trombone and some other things that you'll need for this lesson. All right, before we begin, I want to share with you a word that I use that helps me think about the way I should practice without wasting my time. This word is brass. It's the same metal that your trombone's made out of. I'm going to put the word up on the screen there, and you're going to see that the word brass, each letter in this word, represents a concept I want you to think about. So the first B in brass stands for buzz and breath. We're going to work on that today. The second R is repetition and rest. These are the things you would do when you're practicing. You need to repeat things multiple times so you can get them right. And then you also need to rest. A stands for articulation and agility, and we're going to really spend a lot of time on that first A today. The S stands for sing it. We're going to do a little singing today. And the last S stands for share it. After you do something, play it for your family, play it for your friends. That's the really fun part about doing music. So use the brass method when you practice so you don't waste any time with your music in front of you and you have a direction to go. All right, we're gonna start off with our mouthpiece. I really think it's important to buzz before you even pick up your horn. Buzzing gets your lips in shape. So let's just do some long buzzes. Let's do some high buzzes. Let's do some low buzzes. We'll do some sirens. So now we are going to do an exercise with our mouthpiece, but first I want to talk about this concept of articulation. Articulation can be short notes, staccato or separated, or long notes, legato, or connected. We're going to focus on those separated notes. How do you get good separated notes on the trombone? Well, first we're going to be looking at a little exercise I created from our band method book. And I want to show you two rhythmic elements that you already know. They're up on the screen there. Do and do day. Now, you probably recognize the do as a quarter note and the do day as two paired eighth notes connected by that beam. Some people refer to them as ta and titi, ti, or some people count them as one, two, and. You know, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to tell you why I like the syllables do and do day for quarter notes and paired eighth notes. Do is a great shape for your mouth to get that articulation we're going to talk about today. And do day is another great shape. So we're going to use this little exercise I've written here, and I've written do's and do days underneath. We're going to sing this little exercise that I have on the screen there. And I've got the do's written underneath and the do days. And we're going to sing it on this pitch right here. Ready? One, two, three, four. Do, 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 day, do. 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 Now with my own students, I don't have them write do's and do days under pitches, but I do have them think about it. If they're thinking about it, they're more likely to get the rhythm right and then play it right. Do this with me one more time. One, two, ready, go. Do, 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 day, do. 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 Okay, that's the first step. We're going to do this again, but I really want you to pay attention to where your tongue lands when you say the word do and do day. Okay? Pay attention to that. Think about it. One, two, ready, say. 
do 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 day do 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 where was your tongue right behind your back front teeth do do this is important because now we're going to buzz that exercise and i don't want your tongue to be sitting on the bottom of your mouth i want it to just do 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 day do but with the mouthpiece let me show you what it sounds like if you're doing it right one two three four <laughs> My tongue is still making that happen. Sometimes I see a lot of students, when they get ready to buzz or even pick up their horn, they forget about their tongue separating pitches and rhythms. And it sounds kind of like this. So I'm going to stop because I don't think that sounds very good. But my, my tongue wasn't doing any of the work to separate those notes. It's kind of like my breath was just huffing and puffing. That's not a good way to do it. Here's another thing that I sometimes see and hear students do that I don't think sounds very good. I'm going to stop that too. They're taking a breath between each note. Think of your breath as a stream of water and your tongue when it does the do's and do days, just separates that water so you get really crisp, clean notes. Now, take your mouthpiece, think about your do and do days moving, and don't let your buzz get in the way. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Every one of those do's and do days should sound really crisp and clean. You know, if you had a little x-ray, you'd see your tongue do, 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 and the air would be one continuous breath until you break it with your tongue. Now, we sing it, we buzz it, let's play it. So grab your horn, and this time, we've got our trombone, but let's not let it get in the way of us playing this little exercise. Ready? One, two, three, four. This is really important, and I want it to be important to you too. Listen. If you get something weird like this, you can definitely hear it. That doesn't sound right. And my tongue is not doing anything. Nice, crisp, and clean. You try and practice it now on your own. Now we're going to do a song from our band Method book. It's on page 13. It's called Jim Along Josie. You'll see it on the screen. Before we play it, let's sing it with do's and do days. Are you ready? This will be our first pitch here. One, two, ready? And do, do, do day, do, 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 do day, do, 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 do day, do, 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 do. And for today, I know there's a repeat sign there, but we're not going to do the repeat. Let's play it. Or you can listen to me play it if you like. One, two, three, four. Try that again. Nice strong do's, do days with your tongue separating the air. One, two, ready, go. Take some time to practice that on your own for a few moments, but really concentrate on listening. If you start hearing, stop, correct.
correct yourself and really get your tongue into play so you have so take a moment to practice that on your own okay there's another great song with do's and due do days in the band method book it's number 48 go tell bill it's on page 13 You'll notice there is a composer whose name is on there, Rossini. It's actually a famous overture to an opera called William Tell, and it's really a trumpet piece, but trombones sound great when they play it too. Let's say the rhythms with do and do day syllables before we play it. This will be our first pitch. Ready, one, two, here we go. Do, 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 day, do, do. Do, 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 All right, let's pick up our trombones and we're going to play this. I like this song because all of the do days are on the fourth beat. You ready? Articulation. One, two. Ready? And... Did it sound good? If it doesn't, fix it doesn't mean you're a terrible person, but analyze it. You be the teacher. I can't hear you right now, but I'm trusting you're doing it right. All right, let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. Practice this one on your own for a few moments. You know, I spend a lot of time talking about some things that are happening in your mouth to get the correct articulation. And you know, we really have to describe it in ways that are sometimes impossible to see. But if you will use this method where you sing it first, buzz it next, and then play it, always being mindful of where your tongue is, you will have articulation that makes you sound like a great trombone player. It takes practice. If you're playing and something doesn't sound right, just stop it and fix it. You know, you have to be the teacher. You gotta to listen to yourself. If you were having a lesson with me in person or over the internet and I was talking to you, I could listen and respond, but you don't have a teacher. You've got to be the teacher. And you know now what it sounds like to have a good, crisp, clear articulation. Pay attention to where your tongue is. Don't be lazy. Fix it. If you're having trouble, figure out what the problem is and maybe go backwards. Maybe you don't know the pitches. Fix that. Maybe you do know the pitches, but your tongue's not working. Break it down into parts until you get to that place where it's not working. Fix that, then add the next thing. You know, I wasted a lot of time playing a bunch of songs when I first learned an instrument pretty poorly. They didn't sound good. I could brag that I knew a lot of songs, but they mostly sounded bad. If you were my student, I would rather have you play three or four songs really well rather than saying, I can play a bunch of songs. And I see kids do this. They're, they're more concerned about playing a bunch of songs rather than making them sound good. If you can start now while you're young and get those concepts, you are going to be a great player. And people are going to want you in their band or orchestra or group. So I hope you'll take these things and practice them at home. And I look forward to seeing you next time.